one of the things the Pantanal has in spades is insects. Uh, these flying insects were photographed at a night right after the first rain and almost all the flying insects come out at about that time. This is especially true of termites. They tend to swarm right after the first rain of the season. Because of the light I can't be sure that those insects were all termites but here in better light you can see that each of these individuals is a termite and they come from termite mounds that are in the area in the higher areas the the higher ground of the Pantanal where they don't get flooded out so often and there there are thousands upon tens of thousands of termite hills as a matter of fact you can take a look at the termite mounds in some pastures and they look very much like it might be oh a cemetery or something because every place that there might have been a headstone you can find a termite mound that looks somewhat similar. When Charles Darwin was in South America he noticed that South America was in many ways very much like Africa. But what he didn't see was the herds of herbivores like antelope and buffalo and things like that. There simply were no such herds in South America. And he wondered why not. Well, I'm going to introduce you to the herd. This termite nest contains about as much animals eating herbs as a cow would eat. And so when you look around and you see all the termite nests, what you're looking at is the South American herds. Each of those termite mounds is the rough equivalent of a cow uh, eating, uh, eating grass in terms of the amount of vegetation that's used to support the, the colony. Uh, this is a termite nest, but not the way that you normally see it. This termite tunnel is normally completely covered by mud, but for some reason the mud has either been washed away or raked away in some manner, and the termites are going to have to repair it. Termites are, as you know, roaches, whereas ants like this boy are basically wasps, wingless wasps, and this one has got himself a really big leaf that he's carrying back to the nest. The leaf cutter ants are the equivalent of the termites. And this colony is on the move. They're moving their entire colony's location probably because the rainy season has started. And you can tell they're moving the colony because you can specifically see that some of the ants are carrying those little white dots, which are the larvae. I expect that most ants in the Pantanal you'd never notice. On the other hand, some ants in the Pantanal you'd never forget. There is a particular type of ant, a smaller ant than these larger black ants, that is very, very aggressive and it lives in a plant called a Cecropia. Sometimes these ants are called Cecropia ants, but the actual name that I learned them as is Azteca ants. They actually live inside the hollow stems of the Cecropia. The Cecropia gives them uh, food and lodging, and in return, the ants act as a police force. Any animal that tries to eat or damage the plant is viciously attacked. As a matter of fact, even plants that begin to uh, encounter the Cecropia or uh, uh, touch it in any way, the ants will attack that plant and clean them out so that the Cecropia always has a clear space around it. That's one of the ways that you can recognize a Cecropia. One of the jokes that the locals like to play on city slickers is to ask the city slicker to do them a favor. Uh, and they uh, give the city slicker a machete and they ask him to, to clear out some plants. 
Of course, the plants that they're asking them to clear out are Cecropia that are defended by this ant guard force. And it isn't long before the person with a machete discovers the ant guard force and doesn't forget about the ants. Someone just took a stick and knocked it against the tree and you can see the increased activity of the ants. And of course we're not standing very far away so we're in a certain amount of danger of coming into contact with them ourselves. Look at them here. Mm -hmm. wow. Meanwhile down at the base of the little tree the ants are becoming very very active as you can see and they're spreading out and looking for the person that's causing them the trouble. Over the course of this little investigation, uh, I wasn't totally protected from the ants in the sense that two of them got on me that I know of. Uh, they didn't bite. Uh, they didn't get an opportunity to. I think the pyrethrins that I sprayed my clothes with uh, probably killed them before they could do anything. Hmm. Do you see the hole near the base of the tree on your side that they're going in and out of? Yep. That's the hole to where the colony lives. Okay. That's the main, the main hole. Or one of them. One. There'll be several. But that's how they get into the inside of the tree and that's where they live. They will wouldn't eventually kill the tree now. Mm -mm. No, they will protect the tree. They will protect the tree from all other trees and from any animal that tries to eat the leaves. Yeah. And from any man that tries to chop it down. <laughs> I understand that the joke is you find someone who doesn't is isn't familiar with these ants. And you give them a, a machete and you tell them to chop these trees down. Yeah. <laughs> and you go on with top, top. Then all of a sudden there's all these ants everywhere. These next ants are quite different. They're larger and these ants have no colony home. Uh, they don't live uh, underground permanently. You're hunting at any particular okay. location. They scatter uh, throughout, they swarm actually, all throughout the Amazon, uh, killing insects uh, as effectively as any, uh, any other animal could possibly do. And uh, they really are your friend as much as anything else. Uh, local people that uh, want to uh, uh, clear out their house of insects instead of calling uh, Terminex, uh, they would invite in army ants and the army ants would uh, clear out the, uh, the infestation very effectively. This next ant doesn't come in groups nearly so large. It's a bullet ant and it's called a bullet ant for two reasons. One is it's about the size of a bullet. The other one is that it feels like a bullet when you get stung by it. Remember, ants are basically wasps. They can both bite and sting in most cases. Incidentally, uh, these pictures of the uh, bullet ant we're taking in our dining facility, uh, there were dozens of them there. Now with all of these ants around, you'd think there would be ant eaters. And you'd be right. The problem with the ant eaters is they are nocturnal. I've got my infrared camera out and where you see that movement, that is a lesser ant eater, a smaller ant eater called a tamandua. And the Tamandua, uh, you can see him walking around a little bit there. His schnoz is out front and he's got very powerful uh, shoulders and arms and he can uh, kind of uh, sit uh, back on, on two legs and use those arms to break into, the, break into the ant nest or termite nest. What's really good about this footage is that to a fairly large extent, uh, this animal is not reacting to the light that we're shining on him. Now, because he's so very far away, we're having to use a spotlight. But as he gets used to it, 
he'll pay less and less attention to it and we'll, he'll actually come towards us a little bit. The way we found this, this animal was somewhat interesting. Uh, we all piled into what I call a cattle car. That is, it's a, a truck that's got an open uh, back on it. There's some seats in the back so you can sit down. But for the most part, the most important person is standing up all the time, operating a spotlight, scanning, looking for eye shine on either side of the vehicle. You can see the Tamandua's eye shine there. And when he sees the eye shine, they stop the vehicle and we all get a chance to look at the animal. Now the problem, of course, is we're not terribly close to the animal and it's dark outside and it's really hard to see. So what you're seeing on film through the infrared camera is about as good as anybody got. Unlike giant anteaters, Tamandua are small enough to be able to climb trees and get termites that are, have, have built their nests up in the trees. Despite the fact that it's night and it's difficult to see, this is really some of the most exciting footage for me that's in this particular movie. And the reason I say that is because it's really, really difficult to get anything this good. Here you have a Tamandua actually on a termite nest trying to clear it out. The greater and lesser anteater are of course closely related, but the armadillo, which also eats ants and termites, is also a relative of theirs. And the armadillo in the Pantanal can be a giant armadillo. Giant armadillos can get to up to around 180 pounds, making them look a little bit like a small VW moving through the bushes. In fact, anteaters, tamanduas, sloths, and armadillos all have a, the same very low body metabolism. And the result of that is, in the United States, uh, many of the cases of leprosy that we have are actually contracted from armadillos. They tend to be carriers because of that very slow body metabolism. One thing that we know about anteaters is that they break open a termite nest or an ant uh, hill and they start working on the ants or termites, cleaning them out. At some point they stop before they destroy the entire colony. Now some people have speculated that the reason that they stop is because they don't want to destroy the colony, they just want to feed off of it and then they move on to the next one. In other words, they're uh, sort of uh, environmentalist conservationists. They're trying not to kill off all the termites and ants that they possibly can. The other theory is that the ants or termites eventually mount an effective defense and they drive off the tamandua or anteater. Either theory is a possibility. 
but watch this film and see if you can come to a conclusion as to what you think. I think that there is a hint in it as to which answer is more correct. Now it looks to me like there's no doubt in my mind at least that this time and duo was somehow driven off of that nest that it was on. I don't know how it was done however. I don't know what kind of defense the answer termites mounted. Our viewing of the giant anteater wasn't nearly as good as the viewing of the tamandua that you just that you've just seen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out by showing you a clip that will show you what the giant anteater looks like in the day and then I'm going to go back and show you some footage of what I shot at night. It's not nearly as good as the tamandua. It's much further away. It's much darker. It's much harder to see. We're looking for one over eight feet in length, and this female looks big. She's carrying her young on her back. Junior gets down occasionally, but he may continue to ride piggyback for as long as nine months. The roaring sound he makes is produced by blowing air down his long snout. This is the dangerous part. His escape is cut off. He'll realize it before long. His claws can tear open a jaguar with one blow. They could make short work of meat. Those lunges are deadly. I can't afford a misstep. The anteater is that black dot in the middle of the screen. Uh, incidentally, uh, what Jim said about uh, the anteater being able to use its claws to tear you open is correct. Anteaters do kill people every once in a while. Usually, of course, it's by accident because the anteater has no use in killing people and has no particular reason to want to do so. But if he feels threatened, he's going to use those claws.